Hey, what's up, Nerdgasm fans? Jerry here, a.k.a. Barnacles. Now ask yourself, what would you do if a large guy named Yorg from Bavaria uploaded plans to the internet on how to build a slingshot called a Rambo? Duh, you 3D print it. Alright, welcome back, nerds. Here we're looking at my desktop right now. I have the Cura software open. Now, Cura, for you guys that haven't watched any of my other videos, this is actually the slicer that I use, the program that takes the 3D model and basically turns it into layer by layer uh, coordinates called G code that the printer then uses to recreate the object. So let's go ahead and open up the Rambone slingshot. Let's go up to load model. I have it right here out on my network share, and it just takes a couple of moments to load. Uh, you can see right here. Oh, and it magically appears. I love that. That's really cool. Cool. The Cura software is actually incredibly fast and it works really well. Everybody thinks it just works for the Ultimaker. That's actually not true. It'll work for any printer and they even support it. If you come up here, you can add additional machines and everything. So getting back on topic here, I want to print the slingshot and I need it to be as strong as humanly possible. So over here, I've changed a couple of settings. First, I'm printing at a two millimeter layer height. The reason for this, or I should say 0.2 millimeter layer height. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to print it a lot faster. If I wanted it to be flawlessly detailed or had a lot of detail to it, I could print it all the way down to 0 0.06, um, but that would literally triple the time that it would take to print. So we're going to stick with that. I also am doing 100% infill, which means when I'm done printing this thing, it's going to be one solid piece of plastic. There's going to be no air inside of it. Uh, I've also upped the printed speed to 100 millimeters a second because the Ultimaker actually can handle this no sweat and it lower it reduces the, the time to print greatly. And for support type down here, I enabled touching build plate. So like these overhangs that you see in these areas right here, it's actually going to build a little lattice structure underneath here that can be then torn away. So now that we've done that, you can see we got the ram bone here. We can also go and look at the layers and you can actually see it build up here and it's kind of doing a simulation of how the printer is going to print the item and i really really like this feature because it kind of gives you a mind state of how everything's going to work how the thickness of the shell is going to be on the outside how the infill is going to be all that stuff it's really cool and it's very accurate because what you end up printing looks exactly like that you can even see like the little rings and stuff on it all right guys well we've got our model sliced so let's go ahead and take it over to the printer and fire it up all right, it's time to feed the Ultimaker. So I have the SD card loaded with the sliced G-code file on it. And right here, I'm laying down the first layer. Now, right now we're printing at about 10,000, well, I should say we're playing back at about 10,000% of normal speed because this print took probably about seven hours to do. And so obviously we didn't want a video that was seven hours long because I don't have the bandwidth to upload that. And plus you guys would probably get bored and just go eat a bag of Doritos and like play some video games. So in the interest of ADHD everywhere, we are hauling ass now you can see each one of the layers is being built up one by one it's actually fascinating to watch i could just sit here and watch this thing do it all day and the noise that it makes is even cool it sounds like r2d2 like all day long in the man cave it is bad ass now the material that i'm using here is gold pla pha that i received from printedsolid.com it's actually manufactured by a company called color fab and it's great material it has a melting point of about 190 c all the way up to 220 right now i'm printing at 220 because i want it to be really melted and really bonded together well since we're this is going to take a lot of stress i mean we're actually using this thing as a weapon for crying out loud now you can see the little structures that it's built up it's starting to utilize them now and it's printing over the top of them uh, mainly towards the base down where the little lanyard attachment is on the slingshot but now it's starting to cover up the top pieces and you can see the way that it does it it makes it really easy to break them away and it's not a huge waste of material it does waste some material but without that you'd be unable to print a form like this if you attempted it uh, obviously there's nothing for the material to smash into so it'll basically just drain out of the print head and just fall down on the thing and you won't get a form so the support material is absolutely necessary if you're printing any objects that have overhangs and overhangs are just anything that hangs out into open space with nothing underneath it supporting it Now, unfortunately, we won't get to see the whole print because the printer jammed on this one and I had to do a second print and that one didn't record the video. So I guess we'll just have to live with seeing about half of the slingshot print here. But on the final print, it went smoothly. I identified the problem. It just uh, happened to be some stuff that was in the Bowden tube that was feeding it and it was clogging the nozzle. Simple fix, but I'm back in business. And here it is at near normal speed again. You can see this thing just completely hauls ass. It is awesome, you guys. If you're looking for a 3D printer, Ultimaker makes a badass one. 
Well, here we have Jurg Spargs Rambone slingshot that I just printed out on an Ultimaker V1 printer at a 0.2 millimeter layer height using uh, printed solids color fab material and it's gold um, and it's PLA PHA and I printed it pretty fast. I printed it 100 millimeters per second and it turned out great. The only thing that you'll notice is this is pretty typical for printers that don't have heated beds is you can see the back lifted a little while it was printing. Um, I don't think it's going to make any difference on this. I think it's still close enough and the part, you know, the business end of this is perfect. So I don't think we're going to have any problems. And you can see down here, this stuff's called support material. And what it does is anytime there's an overhang or a contour, um, the printer can fill it with this honeycomb pattern and it literally just breaks away like that. It just snaps off because it's holding on very, very lightly. And you can just grab these chunks. Some are harder than others. Sometimes you need a pair of pliers to take them off. Ah, these ones we might. Ah, I got my trusty pliers here. Let's grab it. Ah, Got to break it off. There you go. See a little honeycomb piece broke off on that side. Grab this side. Snaps off. Usually comes off pretty clean, but you usually do need to do a little bit of cleanup on these. Now, the one that he showed in his video, the slingshot that he showed in the video, I think was printed on like an object or a higher end 3D printer that's not additive. Uh, and that's why it came out the way it did. That's why I really wanted to try and see, will this work on a desktop 3D printer? And so far it looks like it will. I can tell you right now, I already grabbed it when I took it off and it is really strong. I don't anticipate ever breaking this thing. Break off the rest of this material. I absolutely love 3D printing, guys. I have the Robo 3D and the Ultimaker now, and both of them do some really, really cool things. Uh, if the slingshot works out, I'm gonna get some more of that wood material, and I'm gonna try to print one in wood, because I don't think anybody's tried to 3D print a slingshot in wood yet. All right, so there we have the basic shape. Now we just gotta clean it up a little bit with some sandpaper and a file. All right, just to clean it up a little bit, I got my, I just got a file here, and I usually just use this just to get the, the support material off. It can be a really rough file, because uh, PLA doesn't file very easily, so you don't have to worry about taking away too much material. It'll usually just take away the support material, as long as you're not thrashing on it too hard. And then once you're done with that, you can finish with sandpaper if you want to get it nice and smooth. Now when you're sanding it, you want to stop uh, for a couple of seconds just because you don't want the sandpaper getting too hot because it can actually melt it. And then it doesn't sand so much as you can see all the little fibers here. It, I probably should be wearing a mask to be honest with you guys, but I'm not. It might not look like it, but that is completely smooth. That feels really, really good. Now I just gotta figure out which way to hold it because this, this actually seems like it's more comfortable. I picked up some smaller contoured files too so you can do some of the detail work like to get in these slightly rounded spaces. I have a round file. Took that support material off perfectly. Now we're pretty smooth. The handle feels nice and smooth on the back and the front. All the support material's been removed. We're ready to build this thing. Well, my wife was nice enough to give me her Creative Memories cutting mat here. I kind of wish I had this at the beginning of the video because then you could have seen all the nice contours of this instead of against my desk. But what we need now was I need the rubber material to draw this thing back. And so I wanted to kind of MacGyver it a little bit because I didn't want to go buy anything. I wanted to just like hobble this together from a 3D printed model and stuff I had around the house. So what I found, and I don't know if Jorg will appreciate this, but I found one of those isometric rubber bands that you have for like doing uh, physical therapy. I found one laying around the house that we don't use anymore. So I figured that I'd cut this up and try to make a, 
the sling for the slingshot out of it. So let's see, uh, let's see how that goes. Hey, Org, I might have found a new material for you to make slingshots out of. <laughs> oh my God, if you're watching this, you're probably laughing your ass off right now going, oh my God, that guy is such a newbie. Why is he making my slingshot? He's making me look bad. But hey, just remember, you told me I could 3D print it, so I'm, I'm doing it. I'm taking you serious. All right, so we're starting to get a little bit of a band there. I'm going to make it a little bit long on purpose. There we go. In hindsight, I probably could have just ran the file through the holes and made them a little bigger, but I didn't want to alter it too much from the print. All right, guys, it took a little trial and error to get it attached right. What I ended up doing was creating a loop and then pulling it back over. So it feeds through here, it loops around and then folds over on the back and then catches itself under the band and the rubber tension just holds it in place. And I did the same thing on both sides. So that was the best way that I could figure out how to do this. Um, I did already find out one crazy side effect of this and that is by having a band that's this wide, this thing makes a hell of a racket. <laughs> Watch, I'll just pull back a little bit, listen to this. I mean, it is loud, it sounds like a 22 rifle. So loud. But the nice thing is, I don't have to I don't have to make anything to hold my material. I can just put it right into this and go. All right, guys, just for fun, I just made some tape balls. We're going to start with some lightweight objects. They're just uh, painter's tape wadded up in a ball. And I'm just going to shoot them at my door and see if this even works at all. Because, uh, I mean, it sounds cool, but let's see if it actually works. Okay, to hold the material, I'm actually just putting it right into the sling here. Whoa! That actually worked a lot better than I was expecting, guys. Here, let's try the smallest. Shit, did that put a dent in my door? It actually took the paint off the door. All right, let's try, let's try a smaller one. That works great. All right, well, I'm convinced. Let's go uh, shoot something that's a little funner. Well, guys, while I was goofing off with this in the man cave, I actually ran into a problem. I snapped the band, so I had to cut another band out of the same exercise thing. But uh, I actually contacted Jurg on his, for on his forum on the Slingshot channel, and uh, he actually responded to me, which I thought was really cool, and he told me that what I should do is fold the sections in half, like you can see right here, and then fold them over the top and then wrap them with rubber on each side so that they go over the top instead of through the holes. You can see the little holes that goes over the top like that and pulls back. And after doing that, the slingshot is a lot more reliable, a lot more effective, and even way, way more accurate. Well, guys, it's raining and nasty, so I set it up a range because my wife won't let me shoot this thing in the house anymore. <laughs> um, and we kind of run a little bit of a risk of hitting my neighbor's house. Hopefully you don't care, Chris, if you're watching this. Got my paintballs and the slingshot. Actually went to the forum and got some advice from the man himself on how to properly mount those things. And they work a lot better now. Um, the first one tore up in just a couple of seconds after using it. And then uh, there we have my makeshift lights and my range. So let's take some shots, see how this goes. Try to shoot this with the iPhone 5S in slow-mo. All right, for my paintballs, I got these little green guys. There you go. There's one. It's a little bit tricky not having a pouch. That was a good one. You can see it's actually pretty accurate when loaded, right? Now these paintballs are incredibly hard to break. These ones, I can't remember if they're marbleizer or not, but uh, I've had these bounce off me at 300 feet per second before. You can see I'm barely drawing this back. I'm really, really not putting that much effort into it. Just keep hitting the same spot over and over. Painting the board. That works killer.
Oh wow. That that paintball just exploded in midair. Here's a little bit of an up close at the board. You can see I had one misfire, got a little off path there. But overall, it's pretty decent type grouping. I was probably standing approximately, I'm gonna say 12 to 15 feet away from the target. And again, that's just using an exercise band. Well guys, this video is one of the few that I have to say I had a lot of fun shooting. I literally had to shoot over three days to work out a bunch of things and uh, get it all brought together, but I couldn't be happier with the end result. I took something created by a Bavarian named Jurg, and it is badass, the Ram Bone Slingshot. And this guy was nice enough to release the plans to the world and say, if you have a 3D printer, you have CNC machines, whatever, go make your own. And I think that's really, really badass. He actually has his own YouTube channel. It's, it's actually a huge YouTube channel. I'd be surprised if you didn't even know. But you can see it's over here. It's Jurg, I think, what is it, Sprav? Jurg Sprav? I'm probably butchering that. Sorry, Jurg. But uh, I'll put the link in the description. He's got tons of videos and he makes the craziest slingshots. I just watched one where he, he literally made a slingshot that puts a condom on. <laughs> it, it, it's beyond funny. Anyways, guys, go check him out. I think it's cool that, you know, somebody way over in, uh, in Germany created a slingshot. I was able to print it here in Washington in the United States. And I got to just use a rubber, an isometric band that I was using. Uh, it was like a piece of exercise equipment. And I cut it up. And uh, Yurk showed me how to properly apply it, and sure enough, we got awesome results, guys. And I couldn't be happier with it. It's a lot of fun. So, guys, I hope this video gave you a nerdgasm. I had several making it. I was like nerdgasm and all over the place. So, you guys know the drill. If you have any comments, leave them down below. If you have any questions, you can come and ask them to me on Twitter. I'm at Barnacles over there. It'll, of course, always be in the description of the video. And check out my other videos. I do lots of 3D printing, gaming, and other stuff. So, guys, that's a wrap. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, favor, and subscribe. It helps me a bunch. Also, come follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I love interacting with you guys.